Hello everyone, it's Latanya from Latanya Roche Healing Hands. I'm hoping that everyone is having an amazing day. Um, I come to you today to speak with you in reference to, um, it's actually depression. We're going to touch on that again and the four stages of um, contemplating um, different um, options that are not necessary um, when dealing with mental health. All right. So we're just going to get right into it and we're just going to start talking about signs and symptoms that are associated with um, depression um, specifiers. All right, because things are it gets to be specific where you can look at something and you can say, well, that's what that looks like to me. And that is what I was speaking um, in reference to um, in the previous video, um, the previous post that you'll see. Um, where I was speaking in reference to depression and how when you're speaking to someone that you care about, you should actually pay attention and notice the different um, facial expressions that they might have and the tonality in their voices and different things of that nature. So we're just going to go ahead and get into it here and begin to talk about depression. Um, first, we're going to actually define depression and then we will go into um, the different stages of um contemplation when it comes to depression and the um, specifiers that are associated with it all right if there's anyone who is experiencing those things right now in this moment um, there are multiple numbers that you can call um, one of them first and foremost being 911 and then there's the national suicide prevention um, hotline and the number for that is 800-237-8255 all right and you'll find the um, number at the bottom of the screen all right, so we're just going to get into um, depression and we're actually going to um, define depression. Depression is actually fi defined as um, a mood disorder that causes a persistent feeling of sadness and loss of interest. Okay, so it's a consistent feeling of sadness and loss of interest. All right, so we're going to go on now. We're going to talk about the types of depression. Um, there are two different types of depression. There is a major um, depression and there is a minor depression, okay? According to the National Institute of Mental Health of the um, U.S., adult population may experience a major depressive episode during their lifetime. Major depression, also known as clinical depression, affects how the client feels, thinks, and behaves and can lead to a variety of emotional um, physical and physical problems. Okay. The client may have trouble doing normal day to day activities and may feel as if the, um, if life isn't worth living. Um, suicide is a very serious concern for these clients. Often symptoms are worse in the morning, but may, um, last most of the day. Some clients may experience major depression only once in their lifetime, while others may experience it several times. Major depression affects all ages, racial and ethnical populations, and gender groups. Okay, so it's not a respecter of color. It's not a respecter of creed. It's not a respecter of gender. Um, it just goes and colors all outside of the lines, if you will. Okay. And let's go on and see whether or not, um, okay, minor depression. The two symptoms are um, depressed mood and loss of interest or pleasure in things normally enjoyed, um, meaning where, you know, you would take, be capable of taking um, that individual in particular out and um, enjoying an evening of whatever um, activities it is that you might choose when they don't even want to, you know, go and enjoy it, or they may go and they may seem to not even be enjoying it. So paying attention to the settled moments, paying attention to the um, words that are not spoken, the unspoken words and, and the different things of that nature, different gestures, you know, you have to pay attention. Um, <clears throat> Additional criteria used to diagnose minor depression include symptoms that impact the ability to use, um, cri excuse me, additional criteria used to diagnose minor depression include symptoms that may impact ability to function, symptoms that are not due to substance abuse or to a recent loss of a loved one and having no history of a major depressive or manic episode. Okay. And we'll probably get into um, that a little bit later, um, but you can actually go and look up um, major depression and manic 
um, episodes to see um, actually what that looks like, how it's defined, and whether or not you can see it um, in the person that you may be concerned about at this present moment, okay? So do your um, own research and look and find out what the different variants look like um, so that you will be completely aware, okay? Signs and symptoms of depression. Feeling sad and unhappy. Um, anger management issues, being angry and explosive. You've heard me speak in reference to anger management and having an active plan in, in, um, in how you will respond to um, your anger um, and how to control it, an anger control plan, okay? Um, loss of interest or response to previously enjoyable events. Um, it says in parentheses here, a loss of sex drive, meaning that that zhuzh that was there is no longer there. Um, sleep disturbances where you're, you know, at one point you could sleep throughout the night and now you're up wrestling, tossing and turning all night long. Um, increased or decreased appetite, um, anxiety, feelings of guilt, and there are multiple other ones. Okay, so we won't just go all into it in reference to um, the different different levels of it. All right, because as in anything, in most things, there are levels to it. Okay, so don't just, excuse me, don't just um, assume that um, because it doesn't look a particular way that um, that isn't, <clears throat> it can't be associated with what it is that you may be looking at. Okay, it may just be a conversation that needs to be had. All right, to make that person that you care about um, aware that you do care and that you're willing to reach out your hand and hold their hand as they go through whatever it is that they're going through. All right. So um, specifiers talks about anxiety, um, anxious distress is what it says it's called. Characteristics of that is restlessness, irrational worry, and loss of self-control. Okay. Everyone's not going to acknowledge, but at least someone needs to pay attention. Mixed features, depression with um, elevated self-esteem, excessive talking, and racing thoughts. Okay, that's mixed features. Um, melanch uh, melancholic features would be severe depression, lack of response to um, previously enjoyable events, early risers and bad moods, appetite change, guilt, agitation, or sluggishness. All right, being overly exhausted, um, not enjoying the things that were once enjoyable, um, bad moods, and just not a lack of wanting to do anything. All right. Um, other features are listed there as well, and becoming catatonic is one of them. All right. And please do go and look up that word catatonic. That's C-A-T-A-T-O-N-I-A. Catatonia. Okay. All right. So reactive depression is also referred to as an adjustment disorder with depressed mood, meaning someone cannot adjust and they're having a um, pouty time about it. Pouting. Okay. And this can happen when there are different um, life events that happen. You know, the events that we can't control, the things that happen um, that, you know, sometimes we expect it, but some things are really unexpected, you know, and reactive depression is um, said to be one of the results that stem from life events, expected and unexpected. So it goes on to discuss this um, bipolar disorder. They call it BPD. Um, it's a type of major depression, also known as um, manic dis depressive disorder. Um, it alternates between the extreme highs of mania and severe lows of hypomania. Bipolar 1 disorder is classified as experiencing at least one manic episode with or without previous episodes of depression. Bipolar 2 clients experience at least one episode of depression and at least one hypomanic episode. So please feel free to go and look those words up. Hypomanic, 
bipolar 2. Um, according to DSM-5, the main difference between mania and hypomania is the degree of severity as well as an absence of psychosis and hypomania, um, which some won't even really understand what that is. But we'll talk about rapid cycling, which is um, when discrete um, mood episodes happen four more times per year. The process is termed rapid cycling. Meaning is happening quickly, as fast as the season is changing, so are um, so is the mood um, that's attached to that individual who is um, having the rapid cycling. So within every three to four months, um, you'll see that the uh, mood has changed. Okay, it's been kind of inconsistent. It'll be one way for a while and then it'll change and be something else um, after that. And then it'll change and show us something else after that. So just waking up and paying attention for the most part is what's important and imperative um, to make sure that you're aware, acknowledging and cognizant of um, the ones that you are around that you really care about, who you may be seeing um, symptoms of um, depression and different um, mental health issues um, appear as being there with them. So just pay attention and um be compassionate all right um major depressive disorder with seasonal pattern disorder all right um as winter months progress daylight hours grow shorter and winter storms fill the skies with dark clouds that gloominess like yesterday um <clears throat> or on 2-5-22 when um, we did the moment of silence um, in reference to violence. Um, you know, there, there were um, dark clouds. It was gloomy, very, very gloomy out. Um, you know, it was an overcast, if you will, and that's what that kind of looks like. It's, it's how it kind of feels, the way that it looks, and everyone is, most everyone is familiar with um you know, a gloomy day and what it looks like. You know, some like to go inside and, you know, maybe eat mac and cheese out of a bread bowl or something like that. Comfort foods, you know, a blanket and 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 um some good good information to read, you know. Also, um clients experiencing seasonal patterns. Disorders often complain of having less energy, trouble concentrating and fatigue greater appetite with um, cravings for carbohydrates, weight gain, and greater need for sleep. So we'll, we see what this is, right? It's a seasonal kind of thing. You know, it's it's a seasonal kind of thing. Like when the um, spring comes in, everybody knows, hey, it's time to get out of these winter clothes. We can show a little skin. You know, we can get a little excited because we know summer is on the way. And when summer comes around, you know, everybody worked on that. Um, summer fine body all went along. So, you know, when summer rolls around, you know, everybody's excited about that. So, you know, the mood, the seasonal um, depression. So you can't really say that it's a um, seasonal kind of depression because, you know, sometimes a lot of people, most people, I won't really say most, but some people have experienced um, traumatic situations throughout multiple times throughout the year. Okay. And that will, um, that could also look like that, but it's only, you know, grief revisiting them um, in reference to the time frame where a particular thing happened. So it isn't always what it seems to be. But you should be cognizant, awake, aware, and alert, and pay attention, you know, and check in and just to make sure um, that everything is okay. All right? And sometimes you can't just take no for an answer. When you know that you know, you know, right? <laughs> okay. So um, we're going to go on to major depression disorder with um, peripartum onset. Okay? They call it PPND. All right. And uh, sometimes, you know, people will be in a particular space within themselves and they don't even really feel like addressing whatever it is that they're being questioned in reference to. You know, when you're dealing with the um, clinicians and different things like that, you know, they want to hold these long, drawn out conversations and kind of pick and pull and probe um, to, to get that information out of you. But, you know, sometimes people don't really want to go in depth into conversation in reference to what it is that have them feeling that way. But, um, a confidant is something that we all actually need. Um, it's a necessity, you know? Um, so, 
you know, every, every thing has to be um, completely looked at in order to make the correct decision. Like I wouldn't just have a client and, you know, automatically assume because just, you know, three months ago they were, you know, in this type of mood, I would need to do an evaluate and, uh, an evaluation and assessment, you know, to find out what all actually transpired during this time of the year and, um, post events, you know, post life events. I can't just jump to a, a conclusion readily. I have to make sure that there, um, are, is, is a, um, thorough examination, evaluation kind of situation um, where um, there's clarity um, so that no lines are crossed, right? <clears throat> All right, so we'll go on um, and I'll touch on it again um, in reference to children and adolescents. We do see this in children. We do see this in adolescents. And a lot of times when you see it in adolescents, it's due to um, puberty. And it's not really what it's perceived to be, but it's just going through that change. You know, you're going through that change where you're changing from being a, a, a small child and you're going into being um, an adolescent, a teenager. So things are feeling different. You're growing, you're developing, and you're feeling a little uncomfortable with yourself because this is, you know, you're developing into a new you, so to speak. So you will see that. Um, and it's no reason to really be alarmed. It's just time to comfort and, and parent, you know, in those moments. And if there is a need for um, assistance, then and, you know, the numbers um, are floating across the bottom of the screen and you'll be able to see those um, upon viewing. So um, bullying, um, which is another thing for me, it's a pet peeve that, you know, no one should actually be bullied. You should not push someone down and stand on their backs just so you can be taller. And I'll just leave it at that. You don't have to harm someone else to make yourself feel better. That's all bullying is. Um, to make someone feel smaller than what they are so that the other individual who's bullying them can feel big. Okay. Bullying can also lead to depression and increase the risk of, um, you know, per, of suicide um, in children and adolescents, which is why it's imperative important that we keep a close eye and eagle eye, a bird's eye view on our children as they grow and get older and they begin to develop. We need to keep a bird's eye view on them. We need to, you know, be aware of them. We need to be taking um, intel on them. We need to be like, you know, the central intelligence system uh, when it comes to checking in and checking up on our children. You see, um, cognitive behavior therapy is a type of treatment um, for um, depression. Now we're just going to go into um, the four stages of contemplating suicide here because it's something that everybody needs to know, to be aware of. You know, I told you I'm the one that's going to say the hard things. I'm just going to rip the Band-Aid off so that we can become more alert. When somebody pulls that Band-Aid off and this hair that's been growing there and they rip that Band-Aid off, oh, you're going to become aware and alert and awake too. Just like, if, you know, some people done seen the video where the men that went to go and think that they could get them a waxing, just like the women. They girl done talked them into it and they get there and they do that one armpit and they yank that wax off of there and they like, oop, nope, uh -uh, I'm not doing the other one. But for the most part, <laughs> it's like that. You got to rip the bandaid off and you got to do the hard thing. You got to say the hard thing. So I'm just going to jump right into it. Stage one. When um, suicide is being contemplated, this is not for young children. So please be aware, aware and alert of that. This is not um, um, an educational video in reference to young children. It does discuss children, but this is not one that the children should really actually be watching. It's something that um, an adult um, who supervises them should actually sit down and have a discussion with them in reference to. Okay. The individual's needed um, needs are not being met, so he or she becomes frustrated. This is stage one. Anger and hostility develops, and the anger turns inward. So opposed to expressing how one feels, one actually internalizes. You know, there's a thing called an introvert and an extrovert. 
an extrovert is someone who is, you know, outspoken, you know, they like to click up and be with the crowd. They like to hang out. They're most likely the life of the party, but, and, um, that's an extrovert, but an introvert is someone who actually keeps everything in and is very private and doesn't really like to discuss things quite often. So you would have to kind of engage them to draw them in to have a conversation with them, but they'll know it. So don't try and manipulate you got to come correct or don't come at all. All right. So um, respond by trying to help the client identify unmet needs and the source of the frustration and attempt to suggest means of meeting those needs. So that will be the response for when someone becomes frustrated and they get angry because they can't have what they want. Then you need to approach with caution, be compassionate Take consideration, be mindful in your approach as to what it is that you say, how you say it, what you do, and how you do it. Um, this is mostly for trained individuals who are um, aware of what happens in the field. Um, so if you're not trained, then you should probably call someone. All right, again, that number will be floating across the bottom of the screen. And everyone who doesn't know, 911 is a um, number that you can call. You might be placed on hold, but you can call that number as well. Um, stage two, frustration leads to stress that becomes unbearable and panic sets in. This is the one that looks like anxiety. When you see panic attacks, when there's nothing that's really um, going on that your naked eye can see. But something has been triggered here to create that level of frustration and, 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 and panic. All right. Stage three, in an effort to seek help, the individual will communicate his or her helplessness to someone else. Like I said, when someone is speaking, you need to close your mouth sometimes and listen up. Fix your face and pay attention because every single thing is not about you. It may just be that that individual is crying out for help in the present time of trouble. And, you know, sometimes people just will brush you off and be like, oh, girl, that ain't nothing. Don't even worry about that. But um, for the most part, sometimes you just need to fix your face and pay attention to what it is that's being spoken. So you need to open your ears so you can listen. Because oftentimes than none, it's the people that are the closest to them who are actually the first responders who sometimes don't even hear to be capable of responding. All right. So we'll go on to the um, fourth and final stage, which is the individual then begins to um, begins the suicide process, which means they begin to think about it and whatever it is that they're going to do and how they're going to do it and what it is that they're going to say, if they're going to write anything, so on and so forth at that point. So we want to make it to a place where we check in, we're being mindful with our family, we're being mindful with our friends, we're being mindful with the ones that we care about. And, um, you know, we're checking in and checking up on um, the things that we love. Okay, the things that we care about, the people that we care about. Okay, so we have to be effective. Uh, we have to be efficient. We have to be supportive. And we have to be mindful above all else. Um, when approaching these different situations and um, the individuals who are feeling the greatest amount of dis-ease, um, discomfort from the different situations, um, from the life events that um, they have attended. How about that? All right. All right. Sometimes you'll see sudden change or withdrawal from normal um, social activities or interests. Um, an increased use of um, different substances and um, complaining about their responsibility. So these are just, you know, to name a few, um, indirect um, approach. Other approaches to communicating um, their plans may include one of the following coded messages types. Coded messages are non-personal. It is something else that is dying. Just as verbal communication must be read in clusters, so these cues must be considered in the context of their message. As I said, you have to be awake and alert. You have to pay attention. It's just like, you know, when someone goes to get a waxing, you know, when they put that hot wax on, it feels good. It's soothing. But when they go and yank it off is when you feel that pain. So you have to be aware and alert. It wakes you up. 
All right. So justice verbal communication must be read in clusters, so these cues must be considered in the context of other messages. Indirect. What would you do if I were not here to nag at you? Indirect question. Should I automatically peek and tune your focus? All right. Direct. I wonder what it feels like to not be here anymore. Right? So there's a contemplation that's transpiring. So you should be um, attentively paying attention to what it is that's being spoken in the moment, right? Okay. Coded verbal messages. Okay. I hate autumn. Everything is turning brown and dying. All right. So you have to pay attention. You can't just, you know, this is just verbiage. You know, it's, it's tracking around the right area, but this is a lot of verbiage. But this is just to provide insight. So you'll have the foresight as you move forward to be cognizant and pay attention. All right. There are um, preventative measures. Um, it's a it's suicide is a sign of extreme extreme. Uh, extreme distress whereas someone has been in distress for an extended amount of time and the pressure you know we feel like sometimes people will tell you oh you can do it don't worry about it it's just feeling like that right now but sometimes it's more to it than that sometimes you know a conversation a subtle conversation in the moment is great but sometimes you just need to stop talking for a moment and just kind of listen you know, and just sometimes let the air fill in the blanks, you know, and not be so hasty as to move away from that situation and redirect and deflect when there's a need to face something head on. So you can get the um, insight that you need for the foresight that you're going to have up ahead. OK, so preventative prevention. You know, I'm going to be a part of the loss prevention team because I'm certified um, via DACL2 um, to actually provide loss prevention services. So this is a part of the loss prevention services via the Veterans Administration, via um, substance abuse and um, drug abuse national um, things that they have going on. This is just, you know, a public announcement in reference to that, you know, so because of that it's very important it is not simply an attempt to obtain attention because sometimes we think that oh you know that individual is just an attention seeker they're not really it's nothing really wrong with them they're just seeking attention fix your face sometimes and just pay attention it's not even about you and what you presume it to be it's about you paying attention and listening up because sometimes in the moment they may need that attention in the moment to keep them from actually falling or moving in that direction. But because someone actually has a negative attitude as far as perception is concerned and conceiving that, oh, well, you know, they're always looking for attention. So I'm not even going to pay them. No, never mind. But sometimes you need to pay attention because in those moments are ones where attention is necessary. Your attention may be the difference in between um, a choice to move forward or a choice to stay. You see? <clears throat> be a part of the solution and not a part of the problem. I don't know. That just came over me in a moment while I was, you know, breathing. Um, it's not the answer to um, resolve any problem. There is support groups and there are different people that are available to actually alleviate um, the feelings of loneliness and frustration and depression and anxiety. So fret not. Again, that information to whom it is that you can contact will be actually posted and attached to this um, post. So there's no worries. All right. There is also... Um, An easy um, mnemonic way that you can actually remember this in reference to the warning signs. And it is, is path warm? So that's I-S space P-A-T-H space W-A-R-M, warm. 
The I stands for, for ideation. You have to go and look it up. <laughs> Substance abuse is what the S stands for. P stands for purposelessness. A stands for anxiety. T stands for feeling trapped. H, it stands for hopelessness. W stands for withdrawal. A stands for anger. R stands for recklessness. And M, it stands for mood changes, meaning mood swings. All right. There are multiple ways that um, one can actually learn um, all about these different things. And in the future, I'll probably be coming to you with more posts in reference to it, um, just to um, raise the awareness um, in reference to, um, you know, current events and and um, mentality maintenance and wholeness and raising the vibration and the energy um, amongst the people. All right. So we just want to provide the information um, so that you can actually be a help in the present time of trouble. Pay attention to the ones that you love. Pay attention to the ones that you care about. Always give a listening ear. Don't make someone have to bend your ear in order to get you to listen. Um, sometimes it's not the intention seeking at the moment. Sometimes it's just that they really need your attention at the moment to seek them out to find out what's really going on. All right. Sometimes people act and behave in adverse ways because they are looking for attention. <clears throat> but if you pro provide um, positive attention and positive feedback, then, <clears throat> excuse me, there won't be a need for that. So again, um, you can always dial 911 if there is a, um, a, a, a situation where it's, it's life-threatening. You can dial 911 or either you can actually contact the um, National Suicide Prevention Hotline. And again, that number is 800-373-8255. It's your girl, Latanya from Latanya Roche Healing Hands. Love, peace, and prosperity to consistency. Be blessed.